Hello, I'm Kyle. I'm the technical content developer at Maple Systems. Welcome to the Maple Systems video training series. In this video, we will be utilizing a PID, pulse width modulation, and high speed counter to measure the speed of a motor. The PID will function in a closed loop system where it will control the PWM. It'll use the high speed counter as the feedback response. The PID will control the motor and maintain a precise rotation speed. Before continuing with this video, make sure you have reviewed the PID, PWM, and high speed counter tutorials, how to control the temperature of a heater using a PID loop, how to measure motor speed using a high speed counter with a quadrature encoder, and how to control the speed of a motor using pulse width modulation. All three tutorials will help better understand this video. These can all be found on the Maple Systems website. Here is an example on how to wire a Maple PLC, PWM module, and high speed counter module. Both the PWM and high speed counter modules will be connected to terminal blocks. The quadrature encoder will be wired into the high speed counter module terminal block. So 24 volts from the PLC will go into A11, and then that will be jumped to A13. Then phase A will go into B12, and phase B will go into B14, while also having the zero volts connected to the 24G or 24 ground on the PLC. For the PWM module, we'll be using frequency A on the terminal block, specifically B4, which is channel four for that frequency. We'll need to power the terminal block in this case because we're using an output. So 24 volts from a power supply will go into B10 and then that will be jumped to A10. And then zero volts will go into B20 and that will be jumped to A20. Then the PWM signal from B4 will go into the DC motor drive module and that PWM signal will go into the motor. Also in this diagram, I'm using two power supplies but you can also just use one based on the amount of current that you are using. Now back in MapleLogic, let's first go over the high-speed counter module configuration window. And in order to configure this, we'll need to go online first. So go to online, link plus download plus monitor. Once you're online, double click on IOSHSC02, which is the high-speed counter module. And here is the GUI for the high-speed counter module. It will automatically detect that the high-speed counter module is in slot two. And in this case, we're gonna be using channel one and the counter mode is linear, which is counting in one direction. We'll be choosing interval pulse count, also called periodic pulse count. Then the sampling time is used to set up the time and interval of sampling when sampling counting or periodic pulse counting is used. So this is only used if you choose interval pulse count or sampling count. In this case, we're gonna use interval pulse counting. And then for channel one, because we're using a two phase quadrature encoder, we'll choose two phase multiple of four. Once you have these settings configured, you'll click right. You'll receive a message that says set value is written to PLC, click okay. And then click status to view the current count, press okay. Let's go over the PID configurations for this project. So I've already created a PID program, so I'm gonna double click PID. Now, the overall goal here is to have the PID control the PWM duty cycle and receive the RPM value from the motor. Then it will control the speed of the motor. Before I continue further, if you are unfamiliar with the PID functionality in MapleLogic, please refer to the how to control the temperature of a heater using a PID loop tutorial page. Although it uses temperature as an example, it will still help you better understand the PID configurations in MapleLogic. So here our sampling time will be set low to 0 0.10 and the KP or proportional gain will be set low to one and the KI or integral gain will be set to 1.5. These numbers are based on some prior testing of the system. These numbers may be different for your PID system, so it is best to figure this out through trial and error. Then the KD or derivative gain will not be used in this situation. Now for the MV low and high limit, this is the PWM duty cycle. So the low will be 15% duty cycle and the high will be 60% duty cycle. Although the PWM module can output zero to 100% duty cycle, the low and high will be 15 to 60% duty cycle because of the limitations of the motor that I'm using. 
This was determined through a prior process of trial and error, and you will not find this information in the specifications on the motor's data sheet. Then I am using a manipulative value change rate limit set to five, which is 0.5 or 50% duty cycle. Finally, the set value will be set to zero here because I'll be sending a value through my logic. Okay, here is the logic. So first we'll be enabling the PWM module channel four output on this rung and then below that, initializing the frequency for that channel and then initializing the duty cycle ramp time for that channel. Below that, we'll be enabling and starting the high speed counter count. And if you go to your help file, if you go to CPU and then high speed counter module internal IO, you will see the register here enabling to count which is Y4 in this case, and then requesting to start to count. It's Y4 and Y6 here, but because I have the high-speed counter module in slot two, you can see in my logic, I'm using Y44 and Y46. So you need to enable Y44 and Y46, and then below that, we're calculating the current motor speed. Now to find the buffer memory for this, you go to the help file again, and instead of internal IO, you'll go to shared memory. And you can see here, we'll be using the currently counted value. We'll be using the previous periodic pulse count and the current periodic pulse count. That's all we'll be using here. And you can see that it's 32 bits, meaning that it's a double word. So we'll be using zero, which would also use one. And then for this one, we'll be using eight, which will also use nine and then for this one, it's going to be 10. So if you go back to the logic, you can see that I have a double word from statement because we're grabbing a double word from that buffer memory. So zero, eight, and 10 for current count, previous pulse count, and current pulse count. And then I'm taking the previous pulse count and current pulse count and subtracting those together and then taking that result and dividing it by 40 and even though the encoder reads 400 pulses per one revolution for the encoder that I'm using, but to get a more precise RPM value, we changed it to read 40 pulses per 10 milliseconds. So if you go back to the high-speed counter module GUI here, you can see we have it set to 10, which is 10 milliseconds. And then below that, we're doing a double word multiplication here, and we're going to take that divider result here and multiply it by 60, which represents one minute because we're trying to get the rotations per minute. And then once it does that calculation here, we're going to take that RPM value and move it into the PID process value. Then we'll have some conditions for the RPM value. So here is some automated logic with comparisons and timer instructions. Uh, this is just a simple way of demonstrating the need to speed up and slow down a motor, such as driving a conveyor belt. So in a real world scenario, a conveyor belt speed must be adjusted based on different operating conditions such as varying loads. So we will need to speed up the motor based on the amount of load for the conveyor belt and vice versa. We will need to slow it down. So I use some comparisons and timers just to simulate those kinds of situations. So first we'll move 4,500 RPMs into the set value, which is D100. Then once the motor is greater than or equal to 4,000 RPMs, a 15 second timer will begin. And once it gets to 15 seconds, it will move 6,000 RPMs into D100. So that's going to speed up the motor. And then once we get to 5,500 RPMs, that's going to start another timer, another 15 second timer. And once it gets to 15 seconds, it will slow down to 5,000 RPMs. We'll move 5,000 RPMs to D100. Then the last piece of logic here, we're sending the PWM duty cycle for channel four, which is buffer memory 13 into the manipulative value, which is D102. Now let's download all of this to our PLC and see this all in action. So go to online link plus download plus monitor. Okay, now we are online. And if you go over to your PID window and click monitor view, this is where we'll be viewing our PID and off to the right is the memory monitor. So D4 is the proportional gain. D5 is the integral gain. If you go down to D100, this will be our set value. D101 process value and D102 will be the manipulative value. And also in the bottom right corner is a live camera feed of the motor and the encoder as well as the PLC 
with the PWM and high-speed counter modules connected. So I'm going to enable M00 in my logic. It's going to start the motor. And the process value will climb up to 4,500 RPMs. Once it gets over 4,000, once it's greater than or equal to 4,000 RPMs, it's going to start a timer. And once it gets to 15 seconds, the set value will change to 6,000, and then the process value will try to get up to 6,000 RPMs. So here it goes. It's going to go up to 6,000 RPMs. The other timer has now started because the process value is greater than or equal to 5,500 RPMs. Once the timer gets 15 seconds, it's going to go down to 5,000 RPMs. So the process value will continue to oscillate to get close to that set value of 5,000 RPMs. And that is how you would automate an industrial scenario using a PID to control the PWM and a high-speed counter in the control software, Maple Logic. To get more information, please visit the how to control motor speed using a PID loop, pulse width modulation, and a high-speed counter Maple Logic tutorial page on the Maple Systems website. I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching.